Hello everyone. In this video, I will guide you through a monoclonal antibody production example which has been created in SuperPro Designer. The example is included in the examples folder of the SuperPro Designer installation directory. If you don't have a copy of SuperPro Designer, make sure to visit our website www.intelligent.com where you can download an evaluation version of the tool. The example that I will discuss here includes a readme file with a detailed description of the process and its main attributes. The default location for the examples folder depends on the version of Windows which you are using, as shown on the table in this slide. The examples folder can be moved to another location on your computer that has read and write privileges in case you don't have full administration rights on your computer. This video intends to illustrate how you can apply SuperPro Designer and its capabilities to model a biological production process. This means that the main attributes of these types of processes will be discussed in the context of SuperPro Designer. To start, let me first guide you through the process itself. The example at hand analyzes the production of a therapeutic monoclonal antibody using animal cell culture and not only includes the main processing steps, but also support activities such as buffer preparation and holding, delivery lines, and transfer panels. Let's begin with the upstream processing steps of this process. In order to simplify the process, the model has been divided into sections and each of them is displayed with a different color. A section in SuperPro is simply a set of related unit procedure processing steps. The upstream section is split into two subsections, the inoculum preparation section and the bioreaction section. The inoculum preparation groups all the steps that are included during cell expansion prior to the main bioreactor activities and begins with the preparation of inoculum in tea flasks, continuing on to roller bottles, and subsequently into disposable back rocking systems. SuperPro Designer includes several inoculum preparation unit procedures which can be found through unit procedures and then inoculum preparation. Here you see a list of different available unit procedures. After the rocking bioreactor processing step is finished, the broth is transferred into a seed bioreactor of 1200 liters and then to another one of 5000 liters. For both of these seed bioreactors, media is prepared in a vessel and then it is sterilized with a 0.2 micrometer depth filter. Seed bioreactors are available in both disposable form and stainless steel form. The same applies for the bioreactor. This gives the user the possibility to account for disposables. Once the inoculum activities are concluded, the broth is then transferred to a 20,000 liter bioreactor already containing sterile media which has been previously prepared through this unit procedure. The production bioreactor operates under a fed batch mode. The media used during the fed batch operation is prepared through this unit procedure and sterilized using a dead-end filter. The fed batch operation can be easily edited through the fermentation operation by selecting the fed batch tab. Through this tab, you can specify fed batch conditions. Furthermore, the fermentation is carried out for a period of 12 days and the target production titer can be specified through this tab. SuperPro Designer gives users the possibility to also enter kinetic parameters for this type of reactions. At this point, I would like to mention that perfusion processes can also be modeled with SuperPro Designer. Continuing with the example, after fermentation is finalized, the broth is sent to the primary recovery section for clarification. Clarification is carried out using a disk stack centrifuge and a dead-end filter to remove the remaining biomass. After clarification, the product is collected and then sent to a protein A affinity chromatography column, which is represented by these three unit procedures. The chromatography step has been divided into three procedures since the material is processed in four cycles to increase the column time utilization and to reduce the required size. If you utilize cycles in SuperPro, the cycles apply to all operations in that unit procedure. However, if there are operations which you only do once using that procedure, for example at the beginning and at the end, the only way to represent it is to have a separate procedure that utilizes the same equipment. Notice that in this example, pre-processing activities and post-processing activities 
have been divided into two separate unit procedures. It is important to mention that while the process has been separated, they're all utilizing the same column, which can be seen by looking at the names of the columns. More about cycles will be discussed later in more detail. Following chromatography, the product is collected in a vessel and then it is sent to a diafiltration unit where it is concentrated and diafiltered. The concentrated solution is then treated for one and a half hour with a detergent to inactivate the viruses. This is then followed by an ion exchange chromatography step, which is again operated in cycles and therefore divided into three unit procedures. The product is collected in a tank where ammonium sulfate is added to increase the ionic strength of the material prior to the hydrophobic interaction chromatography step that follows. Again, this step has been divided into three unit procedures. The eluate is then collected and a viral exclusion filtration is carried out followed by a diafiltration step where the material is exchanged into the product bulk storage buffer. The remaining final protease solution is then stored in 20 50 liter disposable bags. At this point, it is important to mention that for all unit procedures, excluding those utilizing disposable bags, containers, or columns, an SIP operation is scheduled before the main processing and a CIP operation is scheduled after. SuperPro Designer allows you to schedule cleaning activities based on your own specific recipes. Through this dialog, you can edit the steps that you want to carry out in your recipe. This operation accounts for material consumption and you can even track CIP skid utilization. Biopharmaceutical processes are generally designed to be limited by bioreactor capacity. However, when bioreactor capacity is increased with multiple bioreactor trains, constraints may arise in purification and supporting processes. Such constraints limit the plant throughput. In SuperPro Designer, supporting processes may also be modeled and scheduled relative to the main process. In this example, all buffer preparation and holding activities were modeled and they are represented by the units which are colored in orange. In terms of buffer preparation, a typical step consists of a preparation vessel where the ingredients are charged and mixed, any holding vessel where the prepared buffer is transferred from the preparation vessel and stored until required by the DSP process. The buffer is filtered while transferred from the preparation vessel to the holding vessel to ensure sterility. The filters in between are not included in this model for simplicity. Another type of activity which can cause constraints and that has also been modeled in this example are the transfer panels that are used between the holding vessel and the preparation vessel. In this example, there are two transfer panels that connect any of the holding vessels with any of the preparation vessels. Other such activities which can cause constraints are the buffer delivery lines that are dedicated to supplying buffers to the various purification steps. Typically, the buffer preparation equipment is installed in a separate room to the DSP suite. Therefore, buffer delivery lines are needed to transfer the material to the place where it is required. In this model, four buffer delivery lines have been specified. These lines are dedicated to supplying buffers to the various chromatography columns and the diafiltration systems. The way to simulate the occupancy of the transfer panels and buffer delivery lines will be described later in this video. SuperPro Designer is equipped with a number of features to view the outputs once you have built the model and solved the mass and energy balances. Among these features, there are several charts which help you view and interpret the outputs and they can be generated through the charts menu. Here you see a list of different charts that you can generate. The equipment occupancy chart, for example, displays the equipment occupancy as a function of time. Let's zoom into the chart to have a closer look. In the top area of this chart, you see the CIP skid occupancy and below that you see the rest of the equipment in the process. This chart is very useful in identifying bottleneck equipment. It can also be used to analyze the impact of multiple equipment items that carry out the same operation but operate out of phase. In the chart, the different colors represent the different batches and when you see an equipment with multiple rectangles on the same line, such as this one, 
it means that a piece of equipment is used multiple times in the process. This is the case with some of the buffer preparation tanks. Furthermore, the tool can also generate a Gantt chart that shows the process scheduled in the MS project style and helps to visualize the execution of a single batch or multiple batches. This chart can be brought up by again going to the charts menu and then choosing Gantt charts for the operations. Here, the process is described at various levels of details, starting with the complete recipe displayed by this color, and then it goes into the different unit procedures, which are displayed in dark blue, and then the various operations, which are displayed in light blue. Also, the tool calculates and displays the demand for the various resources, such as materials, labor, heat transfer agents, and power as a function of time. Let's, for example, bring up the chart for the WFI consumption for this process. In this dialog, we need to choose the material of interest, so we scroll down to WFI, and then we press OK to generate the chart. If we zoom in, we can see the chart in greater detail. Here, you can see that we have three lines. SuperPro Designer displays three types of demand. The instantaneous demand, which is displayed in red, the cumulative demand for a time interval, which is displayed in green, and also the average rate demand for the same time interval, which is displayed in blue. These charts can be used to design WFI systems, and that has been explained in detail in a WFI system sizing tutorial, which you can find in our website. In addition to the charts that I just showed, the tool generates a number of reports in different formats that can be generated by going to the reports menu. Here you have a list of the various reports that the tool generates. Let's have a look at one of the reports, for instance, the economic evaluation report. Through this report, various cost-related items are reported, such as the executive summary, and further down, there's a more specific breakdown of the costs. All the different items that are shown below have been discussed in the cost analysis tutorial, which you can also find through our website. This concludes part one of this video tutorial. Please make sure to watch part two where I'll discuss the details of this model. Thanks for your attention.